flip it. <laughs> oh, that was some good stuff, man. Let's keep it going. <laughs> okay, I think he's coming. Please let me do the prophecy bit this time. It's papyrus, basically. Papyrus and sands. I'm staying out of this. Do whatever you want. <clears throat> and so you made it through the test of might. Okay, what's next? <clears throat> to fulfill the prophecy, you must now pass the test of faith by taking the leap. The leap? <clears throat> the leap, yes. I don't get it. Well, test of faith, leap, leap of faith makes sense, no? Oh, just jump already. Come on, I was trying to have an epic moment here. <clears throat> now, hero, lend your courage to hope and your strength to purpose, and then dive into your own destiny to emerge as the one true messenger. Thank you, Kiltano, I appreciate it. Here we go. You guys ready? You guys ready? Here we go! Oh my! But what have we here? It's a new... It's a new setup! <gasps> could this... Could this be? <laughs> Nandato! <laughs> Look at... Dude, it's right. Dude is right. You guys ready? This game just went from 8-bit to 16-bit, motherfuckers. And so did the music. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You ready? You ready to kick some booty? Cause I am. Some 16-bit booty. Let's go, boys. Listen to that epic, epic Sega-esque soundtrack. Listen to that shit. Oof. Hell yeah. What happened? I warped or something and everything looks different now. Hello? Okay, that is a really cool hat. Seriously, wow. Any idea what happened though? Sorry, I just can't get over that hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys. Another banger, uh huh. Yeah, we got upgraded, boys. We went forward in time, and we're kicking ass now. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's not up worry about upgrades right now. Chat. We want to chat about current area. Welcome to the Cloud Ruins, remnants of civilization of giants that used to live in the sky. This place is beautiful, but the structures feel precarious. Yeah, bad place if you're afraid of heights. How high am I? You mean in my opinion? What? <laughs> oh, ge ge geographically. <laughs> well, you entered <laughs> the Tower of Time at the top of the mountain and then exited through the top of the tower. So I'd say fairly high. Enjoy the sights. <laughs> What's the deal with everything looking so different? You know, I was wondering how you were going to deal with the implications of time travel. It seems ignorance really is bliss. Pardon? That moment in the Tower of Time? Yeah. It sent you to the future. Neat. Yes, precisely. Neat. <laughs> oh, this guy, dude. Any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. Let's, uh, let, me, let me look at chat really quick before we get into the, we get into the story. 18 bits of sooner or later 3D. Oh, I ain't saying nothing. We took a big we took a big leap in time, yeah we did. Oh, and trust me, you guys haven't seen the half of it just yet. Just wait, just wait. There, there's still a twist coming that's gonna blow your minds. <laughs> it's coming. There was once a starving little boy who never missed a chance to help his fellow villagers. One day, after helping an old man carry a heavy bundle of wheat, he was offered a loaf of bread. Eat your fill, my boy. It is well deserved, he began. But if you feel like helping even more, there are two gnomes hiding in the forest who are even hungrier than you are. Now that boy was an empathetic one. His mind was made up instantly. After a short hike, he found the gnomes and split the bread between the two of them, without even saving a bite for himself. Thank you. Thank you, kind little boy. 
the gnomes beamed. It seems you have lifted our curse. Indeed, to punish them for their greed, the spirit had put them under a rather annoying spell. They were exiled to the forest, carrying a magic little mill capable of producing anything its spirit desired. But the little mill's magic could only be activated once the gnomes were fed by a stranger acting out of selfless, selfless generosity. To starve while carrying a relic promising abundance, a cruel fate indeed. Now, can you imagine the little boy surprised at who's given the magic item? Name something you want while turning the crank to the right and then the little mill will produce an endless stream of it, the gnomes explained. Turn it to the left and it will stop. After creating a huge pile of food for the two gnomes, the young boy went back to his village to help the, to help the populace with his newfound powers. But as he grew in popularity, his older sister grew in jealousy. One night she couldn't take it anymore and she stole the little mill from her, brother, from her brother's bedside table, along with two leftover pies from that afternoon's feast. Adding insult to injury, she left on the family's fishing boat to reach new lands, hoping to have her turn in the role of the popular purveyor. Once out at sea, she decided to try one of the pies, which would which to her taste were lacking a little something. It was time to try that little mill's magic, she reckoned. Give me salt, she said, turning the crank to the right. Salt for pies? That doesn't seem right. And salt she got, heaps and heaps of it. Now, older sister had never bothered paying attention to how the mill could be stopped. Stop, little mill, stop, she shouted, first annoyed, then worried, and finally panicked. Salt soon overflowed the boat itself, sinking it under the weight. Like, you couldn't just hold it over the boat and have the salt pour into the water? Come on, man. <laughs> it is said that the, sh that the uh, sunken little mill is still operational to this day and is the reason why seawater is salty. Hmm. The end. That was interesting, but it feels more like a kid's story than explaining things about the world we know the actual reason for it. Tough crowd, huh? Tough crowd, huh? Why don't you tell me a story and I'll judge it? So you're looking for additional takeaways? How about this? Seeing how Big Sister's anger led to her demise, irritated people were henceforth referred to as salty. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I got another one. Seeing how Big Sister's shortcomings as a little mill operator led to her demise, unqualified people were henceforth referred to as not being worth their salt. Hey, this is fun. You should go. I'll keep, a, <laughs> I'll keep on coming up with morals to do with salt. <laughs> this fucking guy. As always, this fucking guy. Sweet. Onward with the badassery of the game. Cool. Come on. Up into the wind current, and away we go. Hell yeah. Shop Cooper, anything new to say? So, cool hat. Oh, do you like that? Is it why you chose to wear one as well? <laughs> what? Well, you have the same hat. No, I got it first. Oh, is that what you're going to tell yourself? Fine. I did have the hat first, and you were all over it. <laughs> right, yeah, that's what happened, sure. <laughs> it's true, though. <laughs> Look, you can put your head in the sand all you want and attempt to preserve your ego, but clearly it's not going to work on the person that was there when it all happened. <laughs> this fucking guy. Uh, oh, man, this fucking guy. You just get the fucking devil's due, whatever. <laughs> oh, my God, that's fucking... That's good. That's good. Yeah. The <laughs> trend stealer. <laughs> uh. Oh man. Good shit. Good shit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. This is not good. This is not good. Shit. Goddamn dragon. Yeah, yeah, you better run. You better run this fucking guy. <laughs> he's the best shopkeeper NPC. Yeah, right? Like, he's awesome. Uh.
Now he doesn't have a hat anymore. This fucking guy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs>